Hello, I'm the ASMR psychologist. Welcome to my channel. Now, today, we're going to be looking at the results of the research that we did in the community section of this channel. So, first of all, I want to thank everybody who participated. Um, we did amazingly well, actually, just looking at as well. I posted 10 questions and there was an average response of 375 people and there's only actually two other studies that had more ASMR responders. So I'm, I think that's amazing. We have a very small community and we were even smaller back in December when we did that study together, so it's fantastic. Um, I'm quite excited about, you know, moving forward and um, what we can do. So, let's, let's crack on and have a look at the results. But, I always forget to say this, if you, if you like me doing this, these types of videos, if you are interested in the research that I'm doing, let me know by giving this video an up thumb so that I know you want me to continue. And of course, if you're not already a part of my community, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss anything good. But now, for the results. ASMR is a pretty worldwide phenomenon, but, well, it's surprising to me anyway. It's been largely overlooked by academics and, well, particularly um, mental health and physical practitioners. There's only 11 studies, or there was the last time I looked, which was about a week ago, that have been published looking at ASMR. Um, and that's quite a, well, it's a particularly small amount, considering kind of how widespread ASMR is. So I think it's important to, to try and change that, because I do think, and you'll know this if you watch my channel a lot, I think that ASMR has some real potential to help us with health and well-being. So last month, I posted 10 questions in the community section of this channel. I think I was doing maybe one every other day, something like that, to explore some of the ideas around ASMR a little more, to try and help us to work out the best way to use it moving forward. Now, keep in mind, this is exploratory research, so we need to keep open minds about this. I'm not saying that this is definitely how it is, and, you know, the results of this study may not fit with your experience of ASMR, and that doesn't mean that I'm saying you're wrong and I'm right. We just need to, I guess, open up a discussion. That's, that's the point of this. Okay, now, as I said at the beginning, um, ASMR is a widely reported phenomenon and um, when something is so widely reported, this often means that it's a biological response that uh, 
that's kind of tied to our survival so in some way it is intended by nature to protect us to help us to recover from illness strengthen us in some way and I guess in this study I was particularly interested in the fact that oxytocin is triggered when we experience ASMR um, and if you don't know about oxytocin it's it's the hormone that's often referred to as the the love or the the trust hormone the, the social hormone it's it's released when we're when we're bonding um, and it also is um, the hormone that induces labor and um, breastfeeding so it's it's pivotal to our survival obviously with bonding you know we're safer in a group um, and also when we feel safer this lowers the the stress hormone which is very important for health and well-being and of course being able to have babies and feed them is very important for our survival so this this got me thinking and I was talking to a colleague about this a couple of months ago when I started doing ASMR videos and we were talking about how maybe ASMR is in some way mimicking those early caregiving experiences that we have where we are soothed and protected where we are connecting with those people that can can keep us safe and if you think about it ASMR triggers are directly linked to receiving or giving care so receiving care Here we have you know the, the soft or whispering voices um, personal care is very important in triggering ASMR for for many people um, being read to as well and um, in terms of giving giving um, care if you think about how we like to watch sometimes videos of people preparing things a methodical tasks like uh, folding towels or drawing which is a little bit reminiscent of a, an adult focusing on a child watching a small child in order to protect them I've also read that um, some research psychologists, evolutionary psychologists have uh, linked ASMR to the grooming um, behaviour in primates which is quite interesting because obviously that behaviour is incredibly important for their social bonds and then ultimately the survival of primates so if ASMR is potentially, obviously still keeping an open mind here, potentially mim mimicking those early experiences. One way that we could use that is to boost existing treatments for um, physical and mental health because we could use it to increase the trust between the professional, the, the medic or the psychologist and then their patient um, and then also lower the stress that people often feel when they are in the position of being treated and both these things may well fast track and boost outcomes so that was, that was my thinking behind the research so as I said, um, I posted I posted 10 questions um, over the course of a few weeks. It was in December and it was a, a poll style, sort of trying to take advantage of some of the features of YouTube. And I got between 327 and 
424 responses for each question, which was an average of 375, which is amazing. I can remember when I was doing research, um, sort of as a, as a as part of my, my job, um, I worked as, a, as an associate at a, a university hospital in London. I mean, we would have paid good money to get an average of 375 respondents. It's an amazing sample size, it really is. I think we thought anything over sort of about 100 was good. Okay, so 65% of you answered all the questions, which I think um, means we can link the answers together and make some very tentative speculations. Um, about ASMR as a whole and the questions obviously that I posed attempted to explore the links between ASMR and early care giving. Okay so in terms of our results I'm going to take you through them now. Um, the first question was about what triggers the strongest ASMR for you and 98% of you said that it was either a whispering or a soft spoken voice. I think the split was 55% uh, whispering and 43% soft spoken with only 2% saying it was sounds only. So this does kind of fit the idea that ASMR is mimicking this kind of relationship between a caregiver, a mother or a parent, and a small child or, or baby even, I think the whispering suggests that the links might go back to, to, to really early, really early on in our life. And then the type of ASMR was Question two, um, so we looked at tutorials, which got 8% of the vote, personal care and attention, which got 69% of the vote, reading, which got 14%, methodical work, so kind of observing someone doing something, 6%, and sounds only got so, I mean, the fact that personal care and attention was heads and shoulders above the others does support the hypothesis. And the, the lower scores on methodical work, I mean, this is the format that I feel maybe mimics giving care rather than receiving care, suggests that maybe ASMR is more about receiving care, which again is, is good if we're thinking about using it in some way to, to boost our treatments. Okay, so the, the gender of your artist, 68% of you said you preferred a female, 4% said you preferred a male, and 28% said no preference. I think this does fit with the the fact that it's still more common for mothers to be the primary caregiver. I think it will be interesting to see how things change, whether as maybe men um, step forward as the primary caregiver more, and I know that you know, in, in many cultures that is happening, whether that, that changes this result. Okay, so question four is looking at what you use ASMR to, to help with. The, the winner was sleep, 45% of you said you use ASMR to help you to sleep. Uh, then coming in second was to help with stress and anxiety, that was 28%, followed by 
sadness, depression and loneliness, 17% pain, 3% and low energy, 8%. So that's 90% 90, 90 of you are using ASMR for comfort, for soothing, which kind of supports the hypothesis, my hypothesis. I think it's the ones, the, the, the pain and the low energy, I do think, although they got very low scores, there is some potential there, I think. Um, ASMR releases dopamine, which is uh, very useful for helping us to focus and concentrate, so it could be used, I think, ASMR maybe at a different time, maybe mid-afternoon when we get our mid-afternoon slump to, to help, kind of give us a little boost. And also for pain as well, um, it triggers certain brain chemicals, endorphins in particular, that are very important in helping us to tolerate pain. I used it actually recently, I was really quite poorly, about a week or so ago, um, selection of unpleasant symptoms, but one of which was a absolute cracking headache, and honestly I took so many painkillers you picked me up and I rattled, but I just, I couldn't shift it. But I remembered what I'd read about uh, ASMR releasing these brain chemicals, and I, I listened to some, and it didn't get rid of it completely, but it really did take what, take the edge off it. I found it incredibly helpful. So I think there's, there's something there, maybe, for the future to think about. Okay, question five. I asked you when you had your first experience of ASMR, or your first memory. Um, and... The highest score was, so between 6 to 11 got the highest score, that was 42%. Uh, 42% of you. And that kind of fits with what we know about childhood memories. A uh, few memories before the age of 6 become lifelong memories. And I think that this, this really does just fit with the hypothesis that ASMR has something to do with childhood. I mean, if I, I added it all together, and 72% of you had your first memory of ASMR, first experience of ASMR that you remembered um, when you were less than 18. Okay, then. Um, the next question was about how you watch ASMR. So 47% of you said that you have kind of two or three favourite artists that you watch. 30% of you are said that you select a particular type of video. 3% of you said that you watch what YouTube suggests. Don't tell them that. And 21% of you said there was no pattern. So 77% of you are seeking out a particular person for care or a particular situation for care. Now, in isolation, you could just say, you know, this is how people watch any topic of interest. But I think if we take it in the context of the other questions, it starts to mean something else. Okay, question seven. I asked you how often you watch ASMR. 28% of you said that you watch ASMR more than once per day. 47% said you watch once a day. 16% of you said you watch between 3 to 5 times per day. 5% 1 to 3 times per week. Oh, sorry. Let me just go back. 16%. I don't know if I said this right, let me say it again anyway. 16% said between 3 to 5 times per week. 5% between 1 to 3 times per week. And 4% less than 1 per week. So, I think it's clearly meeting a 
an important need because you keep going back to it regularly. And again, you know, on its own, it maybe doesn't mean that much, but I think considered in the context of these other questions, it does start to mean something. Question eight was about age. And it seems that age, the age of your ASMR artist isn't particularly important. So it seems that care doesn't need to come from an obvious mother figure as so somebody that's older than you. But, you know, maybe, maybe that makes a bit of sense, you know. Caregivers come in all shapes and, and sizes, don't they? Mm, certainly where well, ASMR is concerned, anyway. Okay. Question 9. What's about what you're looking for when you watch ASMR? 63% um, said comfort. Let's try and do this in order. Twenty-two uh, percent said distraction from something I don't want to think about or feel. Uh, Five percent said connection. Three percent said entertainment. Then we have an eight percent that said other. And you know, you left me lots of comments, which was really helpful. There's two types of um, research. You might already know this, but there's quantitative, which is all about the, the figures, and then there's qualitative, which is kind of fills in all the gaps, all the details, the interesting bit, I always think. So, although I'm not presenting that, I've kind of stored it away because it just enriches the research. It gives it a little bit more depth. Anyway off a bit on a tangent but 85% of you were are seeking some type of comfort when you are watching ASMR which kind of fits with what, what I'm suggesting. This was an interesting one I thought I sort of threw this one in at the end I wasn't quite sure what I was looking for here but I asked if you're curious about the personal life of your ASMR artists. The results were a little ambiguous, but I think that tells us something. So, 21% definite no. 26% definite yes. 53% said sometimes. Now, the relationship between a parent and child is ideally a one-way street. The parent gives to the child and this then enables the child in later life to give to their child. So it's a, a forward motion and it's a one-way street. So parents' role, a parent's role is very much to be kind of in the background. They're not centre stage, they're just there as the support. They're in a very trusting, reliable way so that the child doesn't have to keep looking back and checking that they're there because they can just sense them, they know they're there, they can trust that they're there. So maybe that explains why we might be a little bit ambivalent to know the personal details of those that are caring for us or those of our ASMR artists. I don't know, I think that's something to, something to think a little more about. So that might be my favourite question, I think that was interesting. Okay, so, very early days for research with ASMR and the conclusions are very speculative and as, as I said, if it doesn't fit with your experiences, I'm not suggesting that you're wrong and I'm right. If it doesn't, it would be incredibly useful if you have the time to pop your thoughts in the comments for this for this video but so far tentatively I will suggest that the results do seem to support that ASMR recreates or mimics in some way these early caregiving experiences and I think we could use this to boost existing treatments for both mental health and physical health. So 
the therapeutic relationship, which is what we call the relationship between a therapist and their patient, maybe that's obvious, <laughs> is what research has shown, it's the most, it's the single most important factor in determining outcome, more important than any of the techniques that we use. So that connection with your ther therapist is absolutely key. And maybe, it takes a while to, to build that up, maybe we could use ASMR to fast track that process and whilst at the same time reducing kind of the stress of how people feel in sessions, in their treatment sessions, so speeding up the whole process. It's a possibility, I think. It's something we need to think more about, but I think that ASMR has a lot of untapped potential. So with that in mind, I am starting a new study, which I hope you will consider participating in. Same format, it's going to be in the community section. This time, looking at personality and what that tells us about ASMR. I'm going to post a question I think every other day, starting from today, so if you go to my community section after this video you'll find the first one there, and again it's poll style questions, and yeah, we'll gather it all together, I think I've put together 10 questions again, and then at the end I'll do another video and tell you what I found. Okay, so, I hope that was interesting, I have to say I'm I am really enjoying um, this part of this work. <laughs> now, if you um, are interested in some exclusive content or you would just like to support me making these videos, you can check out my Patreon account. The link should just pop up here on the screen. Okay, but in the meantime, Thank you very much for joining me today. Hopefully I will see you again soon. Take care of yourself.